Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Bruce, I love you so much. That was the best reading of that gospel. (laughs) I mean, I never imagined that the devil was an angry British person, but it was so good. Yes! (laughs) Yes, your foot on the stone. It was like, yes! Oh my God! If we read the gospel like that every Sunday, I guarantee it'd be a full house. You know, it'd be like, well, I'm going to church, go hear the gospel today with the voices. I, uh, and I mean that seriously, by the way. You might think I'm teasing, but I, I'm not, actually not. I really did like it. And, uh, and despite that, that's not what I'm preaching on. <laughs> I want to preach on Deuteronomy. I'm going to get to this gospel passage. I'm going to preach on Deuteronomy for a second and uh, about an hour, actually. But um, that's where I'm going to start. (laughs) And I want to start with this passage because because it's very important. In fact, it may be one of the oldest passages in the scripture highlighting its importance to us as Christians today. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien. This is, this is the core of that first passage, a core of that teaching. And if I, I love Rabbi Sachs, I turn to uh, Rabbi Sachs, God rest his soul, uh, who uh, pulls at these threads in the text and reminds us that Abraham and the people are the first to experience God and to begin to save and write down the story of God. And so that's how we come upon this particular passage. Moreover, the people of Israel in their experience and through the text reveal to us the story of history as an overarching theme that God is making it. (laughs) We are not... Despite how it might seem tomorrow morning, we are not at the center of God's overarching history. But God is. Hmm. A narrative with themes of redemption and salvation, hope and peace and blessing. Sachs notes, those who stood in the temple on those days saying those particular words Because this is a liturgy, you see, that we are experiencing in this Deuteronomy passage. Those who stood in the temple saying these words were declaring, this is my story. I am the first fruits from this land and my family and I are part of it all. Sachs goes on to to question to say that it's not just a history about what happened it does answer that that it begins here but it also is always the story of scripture is always a story about who i am in relationship to god so it's both of those pieces we have a context in which we can understand who we are in the present and what we must do to uh, do to hand uh, on our identity to the future like we do today in our confirmations, reaffirmations, uh, and uh, receptions. It's our continuing practice of retelling the story. As Christians, you and I rehearse the same narrative in worship. We do so with special intent today, as I've already said, uh, and we are saying, if think about the pat, think about our scripture. Think about how it fits into the liturgy and the liturgy itself. It is always moving us from what happened to who we are in relation to God, and in particular for us, who we are in relationship to Jesus Christ. Just as the wandering Aramean 
uh, narrative of Abraham speaks of pilgrimage and freedom, so too does it speak to us as Christ's own work of redemption. And you might remember the disciples and apostles, they did not have a New Testament, <laughs> right? So they would hear these stories like a wandering Aramean, and that's how they recognized Jesus, you see. So like them, we then come into understanding that the cross becomes a high watermark of God's overall work on behalf of humanity and creation. In prayer, ministry of the word and creed and at the table, we claim that you and I, that we are a particular people with a particular God who has a particular interest in the world around us. We are in very real way at this table internalizing the story through bread and wine. We are offering a picture of who God is and what God is about. Now, some of you uh, may be like me and have been following the Ukraine invasion, the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. And I want to offer you, there's a picture floating around this week uh, of priests, an Orthodox priest in a basement celebrating communion with a few people by candlelight while the invasion is underway above him, above them. They are in that moment of invasion, powers and authorities undertaking their devilish work, they are reminding themselves at that table that they are God's people. And that not even death will overcome in the end. They are praying and telling themselves that God loves them, that God weeps for them, and at the war that is above them, that God desires that we turn away from this sibling rivalry of Cain and Abel, which perpetuates itself over and over and over and over again, and that they will not be captive to that. They huddle together and they tell our collective story to one another. And as they do, they reject all the other normal basis for identity. Power, political power, territory, shared language. No, it's not based on any of that. Not even based on them. It's based upon God's desire to embrace them no matter what they face. In that basement, in that moment, they proclaim we are the people of God and we remember our story of deliverance all the way back to Abraham. A wandering Aramean was my father and he will be brought out of Egypt and I will be brought out of sin and death by our Lord Jesus. It is a rejection in line with Jesus is in the gospel, a rejection of the devil and of evil. Make no bones about it. This is not some symbolic metaphor. These are people standing up and saying, I believe in God. And what is happening above us will not conquer. If they can say it in their moment, how much more does our moment need to hear our voices. Hmm? Hmm. Why, why would we be afraid to claim this? To stand up and say this. Christ is God, the Alpha and Omega of history, who makes us God's people and redeems us as Paul is so very clear, not merely, merely from the authorities of powers in this world and sibling rivalry between uh, individuals and the sin of the world, but that Christ theologically and paradigmatically, that's a word for you, <laughs> may be seen to take on the public act himself of Deuteronomy. God's 
God takes on Himself an offering of His life for the world, entering the tomb like those images of seed that we've been hearing about that must die because they are imperishable in order to be reborn. He goes into the tomb, He is buried, and then rises to give us all freedom and resurrection. So we come here today not simply to give thanks for some new people. That's, you know, not simply because religion is good, and it is. Not simply because over the last two years you actually decided maybe church was good for you, which obviously you have done because you're still here. (laughs) But we come... To be changed from the world around us. To claim that we are Jesus's and that we are marked in baptism by the waters of death and raised with him as Christ's own forever. I'm telling you, folks. They need to hear it in Ukraine, but they need to hear it here in Huntsville. Amen. And I have to tell you, as far as I can figure out, that's you. And that God's counting on you to make that proclamation. So do it bravely, do it courageously. And if you have fear, then surround yourself with your beloved friends in this parish. Remind yourself of who you are, what you're about. Oh, it'll challenge your own story and your own narrative. There is no question. It will challenge your political agendas all across the board. It will challenge your beliefs. It will challenge you. (laughs) But God is depending upon you to be transformed by his gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.